This is the sixth GXS video. This demonstrates control of the GXS vacuum pump using the dashboard and the PDT, the pump display terminal. We're ready to start the GXS now. Just checked that the emergency stop button is disengaged. Can't rotate it that way. And now we're going to use the dashboard to take control and to start the pump. So what do we see in the dashboard? There are three essential buttons, a button to take control, a button to start the pump and a button to stop the pump. And there are a series of LEDs too. This LED associated with the start button shows the pump is running when it's green. This LED associated with the control button is on when you have control. Control is an important feature with the GXS. Only one thing can be in control at one time. If any form of remote control is already operating, you will not be able to take control with the dashboard control button. Conversely, if the dashboard is already in control, no form of remote control will be able to take over the pump. The other LEDs you see here, we have a power LED, of course that's green because the pump is under power. It should always be left under power constantly if possible. There is an LED for uh, warnings, this will be orange, an LED for alarms, that is a red one. And the final LED, a green LED, is for the green mode energy saving or AUC as it's sometimes called, with the moon symbol. So the other feature on the dashboard, of course, at the end you have the serial port or the PDT port, which is used to plug in the portable display terminal, um, optional handheld terminal. So, firstly, let's take control of the GXS by pressing the control button like this, and the dashboard now has control, the green LED is on here. So now we simply start the pump, by pushing the start button here and the green LED comes on and the pump starts. Notice that the LED is flashing here and the AUC light is on because we'll start off in warming up phase. By default the pump needs to achieve 95 degrees C internal temperature to be fully warmed up. When it is warmed up this LED will go off and this will become constant. During the warming up phase, the dry pump is rotating at full speed, 110 hertz, but the booster would normally rotate at the AUC speed of 20 hertz. And now it's reached the warm up temperature, the running LED is constantly on and the green mode AUC LED is now off and the booster accelerates to full speed. Now we're ready to switch off the GXS, we've finished our process cycle and that's simply done with the dashboard using the pump stop button. And when the pump stop button is pressed, the pump will go by default into the standard auto shutdown routine. The auto shutdown routine is a 15 minute routine, the booster where fitted will be switched off, the dry pump will run at full speed and the inlet purge will be switched on to clean and dry the pump for that 15 minutes before it actually turns off. If there is an LD version of this pump which doesn't actually have the inlet purge it will still run for 15 minutes by default. So let's do that now. A firm press of the stop button and we're now going into auto shutdown routine. The booster switch is off and the dry pump will run at full speed for 15 minutes and the running LED is now flashing. The PDT or pump display terminal is a really useful optional accessory for the GXS and it connects into the GXS either on the front or the back. On the back of the pump the PDT port or serial port is here and you simply plug in the XLR connector and the PDT comes alive and starts displaying the useful information. The PDT accessory can also be plugged into the front dashboard of the GXS into this PDT or serial port here. Simply plug it in. 
In fact, you can have a PDT on both the front port and the rear port simultaneously. The PDT fires up and you can see there is a display, uh, various keys and LEDs. The PDT is very useful for actually controlling or operating the pump, if you wish, for setting up accessories, for adjusting parameters to customize the GXS to your particular application, for example, adjusting the warming up temperature set point, for adjusting when the mechanical booster starts, and for setting how the pump actually stops. The BDT also gives you the full list of the status displays, everything that's going on inside the pump, and any faults can be diagnosed on the display here as well. The PDT is clearly similar to the pump dashboard but has a lot more versatility. There is a button to start the pump and there is a button to stop the pump. There is a display for indicating the various parameters and the information from the pump. There is a keypad at this end which gives you an up and down cursor, an enter and an exit or, or cancel there. And there are four buttons along the bottom. A button for taking control, a button for the normal display, your favorite display of parameters, a status button which takes you through every parameter, and a setup button which enables you to access various menu options. There are three key LEDs also on the PDT. There is a green LED which tells you when you have local control with the PDT and there is a warning LED and an alarm LED just like on the dashboard. It's important to remember the principle of control on the GXS pump. Only one thing can be in control at any one time. So for example if the dashboard is in control I press the control button on the dashboard the green LED comes on, this dashboard is now in control of the pump. It's now not possible to override that and take control of the pump with the PDT, even though it's plugged in. If I press the control button on the PDT, it says pump failed to respond, cancel. I have to press the cancel button. The pump is ignoring the PDT because the dashboard is in control. Only if control is released on the dashboard can the PDT take control? I press the control button and I now have local control. I could now run the pump with the PDT. Of course the reverse is true now. If the PDT is in control it's not possible for somebody to come and use the dashboard to run the pump because if they try and take control with the dashboard now the button push is ignored. Only one thing can be in control at one time. Once the PDT is plugged into the GXS, it can be used to start and stop the pump. So we'll show that very simply. First of all, we must take control by pressing the control button. And the control LED, green LED, comes on here. Then we have the button to start the pump. And when we're ready, the button to stop the pump. To start the pump, we push the button here. It says start menu, start pump. Our answer is yes, please. So we press the enter to accept the starting of the pump and the pump begins to start up. Because this pump is warm there is already no requirement for the warming up phase and so the pump running LED here is not flashing it is on constantly the pump in this case is already warmed up. Notice that the mechanical booster where fitted, the MB, starts 20 seconds after the dry pump by default. And very quickly both the DP and the MB reach their full speed and the full pumping capacity is attained. And simply to stop the pump we would just press the stop button. When we do press the stop button, we're presented with two options. The shutdown menu is the default auto shutdown. Or if we press the scroll key, we could change that if we wanted to, to a fast shutdown. And you could toggle between the two. Auto, remember, would take by default 15 minutes and would include inlet purging for an MDMD Plus version. In this case, we're going to choose 
the simple fast shutdown we select that with the cursor key and now we press enter and the pump is now in a quick shutdown a fast shutdown So the GXS is now on process running full speed, the DP is at 110 hertz, the MB is at 102 hertz. If we want to take it now into green mode, standby or energy saving AUC mode, we need to enter the setup menu. So we simply press the setup button and in the setup we will find the command menu. We press the enter on the keypad here to go into the command menu. We are requested for the password, the operator level password in this case is 202, so we put in 202 and now we have a range of commands. There's a command for mechanical booster or a command for the green mode, so that's what we want to do. We want to switch the green mode on, we simply enter the green mode and we toggle from green mode off to green mode on and press the enter button. If we switch back to our normal display you can see the speeds will now decrease to the green mode speeds. So we're now at uh, green mode speed, we're saving energy, the switchable gas ballast has been switched off. If there was an inlet isolation valve connected to the GXS it would have been closed. And the green running LED here is flashing to show we're in green mode. So once we're in green mode to go back onto process we need to switch the green mode off. So again we press setup and in the setup we find the commands we enter the commands, this time we're not requested to enter the password because we've just recently done it and we find the green mode, we enter that and instead of the green mode being on we toggle to off and press the enter go back to our normal display to display our speeds and the pump and the booster accelerate to their normal full pumping speed the running light is constant, showing we're back on process. The switched gas ballast will be switched on again. And any connected inlet isolation valve would have been opened. Another very useful part of the PDT is the status button here, which enables us to see the current status of various useful operating parameters of the GXS simply by pressing this button we can review for example the serial number the identity of the device in control in this case PDT1 is this PDT plugged into the front dashboard port scrolling with the scroll button we can see what the dry pump current is and what the mechanical booster current is we can see the green mode condition at the moment the green mode is off in other words the pump is on process the TCS ref is the external temperature probe value on the outside of the screw pump. The DP temperature, dry pump temperature, is shown and the mechanical booster temperature is shown. The DP temp, by the way, is the computed internal temperature of the screw. The power for the DP and the MB can also be shown. The speed in relative percent and in hertz for the DP the speed in percent and hertz for the mechanical booster MB. The inverter temperatures for the DP and MB are also shown. The exhaust pressure can be indicated here. This being a, an MD or MD plus version would also have exhaust pressure. And the total number of running hours of this GXS pump is also recorded here. The number of times the pump has started is also recorded for diagnostic purposes. The time to stop is currently not registered because the pump is not stopping. If the pump was stopping, 
This would give you the countdown in seconds to the predicted time of stopping. The solvent soaking routine is confirmed to be off. The auxiliary gauge is indicated here. We don't have a gauge connected, so it is showing zero volts here. But there is the ability to plug in a standard 10 volt pressure gauge to display a pressure through the PDT menu. And the time to warm up would be displayed here. There's no register at the moment because the pump is already fully warmed. When a PDT is plugged in, it will default to its normal display and this LED will come up here, the normal. The normal display is four lines of the favourite parameters, the favourite status parameters and it can be customised on the PDT and the PDT will remember the four parameters which should be used in the normal display. In the same way the PDT will also remember the favoured units. So to set up the normal display, in this one here I have shown the MB and DP speeds as the first and second lines and the third and fourth lines the MB and DP operating temperatures. To change the four parameters in the normal display, we simply set up the normal display by going into the setup menu. And in setup menu, we scroll down to display attributes, just there, display attributes. We go into display attributes and we scroll to the normal display. And in that part of the menu, we select and implement the four lines we want for our normal display. So we'll just review the interaction between the emergency stop system and the PDT when it's in use. If the emergency stop button is pressed, of course the pump will stop immediately. And I'm just going to release that button now so that we can restart the pump in a moment. And when the emergency stop is activated, we have warning and alarm LEDs showing on the PDT, just as they do also on the dashboard. But the advantage of the PDT is there is also the message which says alarm 1.01, stop activated. 1.01 is a diagnostic code and all of those codes are in the manual. Stop activated gives us a clear uh, message of what's happened. The EMS has uh, been activated. We must clear this message first by pressing the enter button and then to restart the pump and to clear the warning and alarm we must use the PDT or we could use the dashboard to actually restart the pump to clear the stop alarm. So now I'm in control, I press the pump start button, start pump, press enter and it clears the warning and the alarm and restarts the pump back into normal operation. The alternative to a physical PDT is to use a PC or a laptop uh, and use the virtual PDT software uh, to work with the GXS that requires a, a LAN Ethernet connection. So by plugging in an Ethernet cable to the GXS Ethernet port, we can establish the connection through to our laptop and then run the virtual PDT program. With the Ethernet uh, connection made between the laptop or PC and the GXS, uh, typically they'd be on the same network. The default GXS address, as we've said, is 10.0.0.1. We open the virtual PDT software and we enter the IP address of the pump, 10.0.0.1. And we put in the port number which makes the virtual PDT work. 47591. We connect to the pump and we have now a true virtual PDT. I'm just going to blow up the size of that a bit bigger. And this virtual PDT will do everything that a physical PDT will do. So for example we can take control of the pump. And we now have control of the pump. The LED is on for local control and PDT3 which is the virtual PDT is now in control and now we can start this GXS pump using this virtual PDT software simply by pressing the start button and then pressing enter to accept starting the pump.
scrolling through the status menus again will allow us to see all of the different parameters as the pump starts up. And in the same way on a real PDT you would stop the pump using virtual PDT we can again press the stop button and we can select either auto shutdown or fast shutdown. In this case I'm going to choose fast shutdown and to stop the pump quickly.